Alpha and the Omega, our God in ages past, and the God of years to come, we want to say thank you to you. Your children in the Redeemed Christian Church of God Praise Assembly have come to say thank you for starting the year with us gloriously and preserving us to see the very last Sunday of the year in a glorious manner. We say thank you. If the whole ears on all our heads were combined together and they become tongues, they are not just sufficient to express our appreciation to you. But as long as we have the time and the grace, we will keep on praising you. Your praise will never cease from our mouths. Please accept our thanks and praise in Jesus' name. On behalf of all members of our family from far and near, those who are here, those who are not here, we say thank you to you. Yeah, you did not allow us to sort over any of them, we say thank you. Those things you permitted in year 2020, we say thank you for them. We know that all things work together for our good. Please accept our thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. There are certain things that happen that we didn't so much like. But Lord, who can, who can we query you? In all of this, we say thank you. Please, Lord, we ask, oh Lord, even as we keep thanking you, you make the years ahead better for us. Far better for us. And you keep taking the glory in our mouths. Thank you, Father. May we this morning, please bless us. Prepare our head for your blessing. Drench our lives and our head with your blessings. Please, with much blessing, let us enter into the new year. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. For those of us who have not greeted compliment of the season, please accept our compliments in the mighty name of Jesus. Please let me just add this to our announcement. At the crossover service on Thursday, we will be observing social distancing. Uh, we might have to revert to a little more spacing of our chairs. But we will make do with the outside. And then, but immediately the space of chairs provided has been exhausted. No one will be allowed to come inside. Please, if you are coming from the crossover, please come on time. God will bless us in Jesus' name. And then come observing the protocols. Today is the very last Sunday of year 2020. And then while it's done on us that we will be preaching today, we sought the face of God and he said, it's about the Father's blessings. And when we're talking about Father's blessings, it's not about the age. I have my fathers in the house. I have my mummies in the house. And as we will discover in the course of observing the scripture, we discover that well, God sometimes confer the authority on whoever he wants or wills to do that. And I pray that the blessings that will be released today will stick to us in the mighty name of Jesus. What is a blessing? A blessing is the activation or mobilization of godly forces and resources to work in favor or on behalf of a person or a group of persons. In the book of Genesis chapter 12 and chapter 22, God visited Abraham, the patriarch of faith. And he told him, well, I have just chosen you and I am blessing you. And this blessing is not only for you, but for your seeds. And when we're talking about seeds, seeds could go from generations to generation. So may I ask how many seeds of Abraham in the house this morning? 
Oh, and yet you and I didn't know Abraham. And yet the blessing is taken. So you agree with me that the blessing upon Abraham has effect on our lives. Blessing is the opposite of a curse. And what is a curse? A curse is the activation or mobilization of evil or satanic voices to work against a person or a group of persons. Very, very powerful. Both of them, a blessing and a curse, they have powers. They're not physical, but you can see their effects. You can see the physical effect moving like wild fire. I pray for you and myself this morning under this unction of God that every element of causes still remaining in our lives shall be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And every blessing that is due to us that has been hanging or suspended shall be released in the mighty name of Jesus. So you can see from that that there could be a father blessing and a, fa a father's cause. In the book of Genesis 48, verse 12 to 20, there was a blessing placed on the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, by their grandfather. And then from that, their lives was propelled to act faster and to bring positive things to them. And also we find in the book of Genesis chapter 49, from verse 1 to 7, a curse placed on the children of Jacob, some of the children of Jacob, particularly Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. And that sticks to them, their father. Now, who is eligible to bless? Quickly, number one. Your immediate male progenitor, that is your biological father. We we'll find it in the life of Adam, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on. A male ancestor, like I asked, how many children of Abraham are here? So you and I could claim, oh, Abraham is our ancestor. So the blessings of Abraham is reigning in our lives. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2 says, Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave back to you in pain. When he was but one, I called him. Then I blessed him and multiplied him. Who is eligible to bless a spiritual ancestor? Abraham qualifies under this office too. And that's why we find in the book of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 says, And if you belong to Christ. So how many of us belong to Christ here? So if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendant. Yes. According to the promise. And then finally, who is eligible to bless? A spiritual head. Somebody who has appointed to be your spiritual head has the authority to bless. And on this office, we are operating this morning. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12 to 14, we saw the story of Elijah and Elisha. Prior to that event, Elisha was working his father's farm, and then suddenly Elisha, the prophet Elisha was passing by, and suddenly spotted him, by divine inspiration, dropped his mantle on him. And then the guy knew what that meant 
from that moment, he began to follow Elijah. And then he called him my father. No wonder when it was time for Elijah to go, the mantle was transferred to him. So, your spiritual father has the authority to bless you. So also in the book of 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14 to 19. We have the case of King Joash, the king of Israel, coming to prophet Elisha. At his sick bed and say, Father, bless me. My father, my father. And he blessed him and the blessing sticked to him. Take note of this. If your biological father or ancestor caused you a true mind that statement, a true spiritual head who is connected to the most high God. Or if spiritual father is authorized to cancel that cause. And you find that in the case of the children of Jacob. After he has caused them in Genesis 49 from verse 1 to 7, he caused Reuben, Simeon, and Levi. And by that cause, things began to go in the negative directions for them and their generation. But in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1 to 8, we find Moses, the anointed man of God, who was their spiritual father, turning the curse into a blessing. Why do we need the Father's blessing? Number one, it is our covenant right. Every father is authorized to bless his children. When God has blessed a father, it is his right and authority to bless his children. And that's why you see us from time to time look out, look forward for the blessings of our parents. When we are in a, doing anything, we engage in one occasion or the other. When we visit our parents, well, bless me before, you, before I go. We live under, number two, we live under a system which operates with rules and laws. And then, <laughs> they differ from place to place. They differ from family to family. They differ from culture to culture. Several rules and laws. But some of these rules and laws are against and contrary to the ultimate rules and law of God. When we were growing up, we grew up under these rules and laws. I may not have enough information now because of my time. And I wouldn't want to delve into that so that we would not digress from our topic. Many of us, because of the fact that we wanted to obey the rules of our family, wanted to obey the rules of our culture, where we were born, we have transgressed the rule of God. Traditions, the, the deity of our family, we sacrifice to some idol, and so on and so forth. Annually, we pay some deity to protect us ignorantly and foolishly. And yet, we never knew that they have repercussions. And some of us, even after giving, back, uh, giving our lives to Jesus, we still do them. And then there's no how you violate the rule of God and there won't be repercussions. So, Father's blessings help us out of them most of the time. Then, what will a Father's blessing do for you? What will a father's blessing do for you and I? Number one, it gives you and I an edge over others and over our competitors. 
if we are in line with somebody, maybe we are contesting for a promotion, for an office, for a position. And then a father, we say true spiritual father connected with God when he speaks. It doesn't matter the chances of your partner or your co-contestants. He loses out. And that's why I want to encourage us don't let us joke with the blessings of God. Age is not a barrier to father's blessing. You might be the senior, but when the junior is blessed, it takes over. And we find it in the story of Jacob and Esau and also Ephraim and Manasseh. Just by divine providence, they got it and they moved ahead of their senior. A father's blessing always propelled the blessed with speed to accomplish faster and easier than others. Number four, it is the wing that carries you over situations and circumstances where others are held down. Just discover you got a lift where others are still struggling. Something will just pick you out and then on the wings to a greater height. The Father's blessing is a covenant right of those who have given their life to Jesus. Let me repeat that. The Father's blessing is the covenant right of those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. It only works for those who are already connected to God. Don't forget that before a blessing will come, it will come from God, rest on a Father that is authorized either biologically or spiritually. And then if it is flowing out, if you are not also connected, it will just pass through like a water on the body that can't penetrate. But when you are connected, it has a way of penetrating into your system, penetrating into your destiny, penetrating into every aspect of your life. So that's why at this point, I want to ask if you are here this morning, you are sure, you know it, that you have never surrendered your life to Jesus. Or somehow, in the course of the situation and circumstances of life, you have backslided. You need to reconnect with him. So while we stand on our feet and be ready to pray, I want to ask that if you want to give your life to Jesus, just signify. I won't call you out, but I just want to pray for you wherever you are. Shall we rise up on our feet? Shall we rise up on our feet? Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone here who will want to give his or her life to Christ? Or you want to rededicate your life to him? God bless you, my sister. I can see your hands. Is there any other person? I wouldn't want you to lose out of what God intends to do here this morning. My sister, please, can you just, just talk to him and say, Father, I surrender my life to you today. I want you to forgive me of all my sins. I want to connect to you. Please remove my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. I want to be part of these blessings this morning. I have struggled enough. I have labored on my own enough. Please, I look up to your help, Lord. Talk to him. I surrender my life to you today. In Jesus' mighty name. The rest of us who can be thanking God for what God will do this morning. Father, I want to thank you for your daughter. Openly, before this congregation, she has surrendered her life to you.
He said, no one comes to you that you will reject. Please accept her. Forgive her sins. Write her name in the book of life. And from this moment, empower her with your blessings to live the rest of her life for you. And in the end, O oh Lord, let her reign with you in your kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want us to quickly pray and say, Father, please don't let my head reject your blessings today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, Lord. Oh, it is very, very key and important that it is coming in the last Sunday of year 2020 so that I will be crossing over, oh Lord, in the realm of your blessings. Please, Lord, let not my head reject your blessings today. Let not my head reject your blessing. And then you had to that prayer and say, whatever I have done in the past, that has attracted causes into my life. Let your blood cleanse them today. Whatever I have done in the past. Error of commission, error of omission, oh Lord. Please, Lord, even the one that has been transferred to my children and to my grandchildren, please, Lord, let your blood cleanse today. Let your blood cleanse today. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your blood cleanse today. So to God and say, Father, please prepare every area of my life. Spiritually, physically, mentally, materially, oh Lord. Professionally, academically, maritally, emotionally. In every aspect of my life. Prepare for your blessings this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Prepare every aspect of my life. Prepare every aspect of my life, oh Lord. For your blessings this morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Brethren, amen. When you say amen, you are only agreeing. You are saying, so be it. And if God has so faithfully decided to release this blessing on us today. I know he has a purpose. I honor the grace of God upon my daddies and mommies in the house. But please under this priesthood office, please receive the blessings of God. Amen. It will drench your life. Amen. It will do your life a good. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. I stand as the representative of the Almighty God to declare the following blessings upon you today in the name of God Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you Amen. and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you Amen. and be gracious to you. Amen. He will lift his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace. Amen. Blessed that shalt thou be in the city. Amen. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Amen. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body Amen. and the fruit of your ground Amen. and the fruit of your cattle, Amen. the increase of your kind Amen. and the flocks of your sheep. Amen. Blessed shall be your basket Amen. and your store. Amen. You are blessed you are going out. And your blessing you're coming in. Amen. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you Amen. to be smitten before your face. Amen. When they come against you in one way, they shall flee before you in seven ways. Amen. The Lord shall command his blessings upon you Amen. 
in your storehouse Amen. and in all your endeavors Amen. and you shall be blessed Amen. in your newly found territories Amen. you and your household shall be established as a people of God because you obey his commandment and walk in his way by the reason of God's favor and mercies over you and your family the whole earth shall honor God in your life and they shall also be afraid of you the Lord shall make you plenteous in good in the fruit of your body and in the fruit of your farm and in the fruit of your garden the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure the heaven shall rain on your land in a season and bless all the works of your hand you shall lend to nations and you shall not borrow the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail you shall be above only and not beneath the Lord shall multiply his grace and mercy towards you and your household to serve him alone and obey his commandment in the name of Jesus I decree and declare in all areas of your life that your parents or guardians has filled you may you receive double blessings in the mighty name of Jesus by the blood of the lamb that was shed on the cross at Calvary be set free from all the wounds and the effect of harsh treatment Causes and evil covenant Amen. Cruel words From your parents or guardians Amen. Or ancestors In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. I pray for every widow or widower here Going through any form of pains Or torture I decree divine succor For you and your household Amen. In the name of Jesus to every brother and sister that is eligible for marriage, I remove every obstacle and barriers Amen. off your path Amen. and hereby release you Amen. to marry Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. From every torment you have been going through due to parental neglect and mismanagement, be delivered now in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. from every marital disappointment griefs rage and abuses I decree divine intervention and rescue Amen. for you in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. from the repercussion of parental over indulgences receive divine rescue plans Amen. for your freedom in the name of Jesus Amen. From every limitation that your painful past has placed upon your destiny, receive freedom now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command your release and deliverance from all form of unhealthy bonds and evil association that parental neglect has caused in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil covenant causes from your lineage that is threatening to penetrate the lives of your chi own children I command their final and permanent destruction now in the name of Jesus from now on I release you to begin to make positive progress in every area of your life begin to fly until you swell into the height of God's purpose for your life in the mighty name of Jesus I make this declaration in the name of God the Father I 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and just give glory to God. Just give him praise. 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 Oh, just thank God. Just thank God. And I will want us to use that blessing and authority that has been confirmed upon us to declare this one thing. I will sing this song and I will use it to declare ahead of time. In the name of Jesus, I will see the end of this year. This year we never see my end. In the name of Jesus, I will see the end of this year. Hallelujah. This year we never see my end. What about you? I will see the end of this year. In the name of Jesus. second, every minute, every day remaining in 2020. How you want it to be? Tell him, Father, as I go with this, your blessing, every of my blessings hanging in the air, wherever, oh Lord, let them begin to re be released. Let me begin to harvest them. Let me begin to harvest every blessing. Divine blessing that is, oh Lord, released into 2020 for me, that are yet to be delivered. By oh Lord, the authority of this blessing this morning, let them begin, oh Lord, to find me. Let them begin to locate me in the name of Jesus with great joy, with great celebration. I will see the end of this year. I will march into the year 2021 with joy, with celebration, with every member of my family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I cancel every evil, every evil from anywhere, oh Lord. Sin and unseen, known and unknown, in the name of Jesus. Use your mouth now to decree what you want for the rest of this year and what you want in the years ahead. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just from a distance, just congratulate your neighbor. Congratulations, 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 congratulations. congratulations. congratulations.